Yoda. All right. There you go. You go. guys are live. How's everybody doing? Uh, now, not so good. Okay. Oh, Christ, what so a let's, shit show. Let's walk through this, like, first of all. So, what are these, and what do they do to the structures? They, they look like it's just an anti-chip that you pay in the to place the structure, right? Right, but it's that's that's what blinds. CCP called it. So dumb. This is just blinding up. It's like, what in the hell is this supposed to do? It's I'm... only okay. the The whole Roach Motel thing, uh, s s throwing down structures uh, for nothing. Sure, it might do something with that, but this is just sound waves, old idea, and it's just dumb. So. I... I mean, I think we should obviously kind of talk about the technical aspects of it before we get the uh, or opinions of it. So these things are going to be a required service for structures, right? That's what I'm mm -hmm. understanding. Yep. So they have to be plugged into a structure. Um, they... Uh, and they're varying in size and cost depending upon um, what structure it is that you're putting down. So the obviously the Astro House and the Athenor are going to be the smallest. And they're valued at six and seven hundred million esque. Uh, the Raytaru is also five hundred M three, but it's worth eight hundred million esque. The Fortizar, this is where this is where it gets interesting because the, the Fortizar is fifty thousand cubic meters. Um and is worth four billion isk. So I mean that's throwing you're literally throwing almost sixty to seventy percent of your Fortizar cost, you know, of the hull of the Fortizar on top of you know dropping a fort. Same thing with the Taitara. It's 3.5 billion is get 50,000 cubic meters. Asbel is um, 3 billion at 50,000 cubic meters. So that it follows the same pattern of small, medium, large. And then the two large structures, the Keepstar is 30 billion isk for uh, and the Keepstar upwell core at 250,000 M3. And a Sotillo is 10 billion esque at 250,000 M3. The structure, it says at the bottom here that services are offline during the hull vulnerability stage. So did, did they specifically say that like tethering is also going to be offline? So does is yes. tethering considered to be a service, quote unquote? Tether, I don't know what they say for new structures. I'm sorry, I was saying this, uh, or are they referring to service modules? That might be a question for clarification. Yeah. Well, it's not going to do anything to existing structures, right? Uh, at least not until yes. my, my yes. birthday yes, next year, 12th of January. So the yeah. point is, and, and yes, I doxed myself. The point is, <laughs> this is really just as dumb as it was when we discussed it the last time. And it's not going to have an impact on anything that's out there now. So the only value this whole feature has is the mm, aggressive structure spam uh, usage. That's the only thing that this disincentivizes. Other than that, it's just a dumb flat NPC taxation on structures that's going to be completely useless. Well, let's take a Can step I, back for a second here. Caleb, the sorry, last I'm going to jump in discussed. here, Tiberius. Sorry, I'm jumping in here. Caleb, it doesn't even deal with structure spam. No, because no, ma it's, it's major it's alliances, it. major alliances will just have a stockpile yeah. of these that they get from structures they kill from another group that they don't sell back. It's not an ISK sync. It's not going to slow structure spam. Do these All it's doing is... Oh, no, they don't no, get destroyed. They, they drop. They have a 100% drop chance on... Oh, well, then, yeah. Bigger, bigger corporations and alliances are just going to hoard these as they kill other structures. So it's trivial. I'll tell you what's going to happen. 
I'm going to go roll over some group in Provi, whoever sets up there. I'm going to kill all their small structures, push them out of null, end up with them quitting the game because I stomp them so hard, and then just use their cores to do my structure spam wherever I go next. Well, yeah, you're basically... You can go attack. Uh, I mean, let's take a step back here for a second. So, what was the when was the last time this was talked about, Caleb? You said this was this this, this was discussed before. Well, okay, this is basically a page from the old Titan idea, and the old Titan idea was that was that there were supposed to be these things that made it a limited thing in in the universe, right? Um, of course, th we're not talking limitation yet, like a hard limit, because that's not really mentioned but they now have a knob that they can turn and say well npcs are not seeding these anymore done or npc are increasing the price to double done and and that's just completely removing the whole sandbox element but but that was why it was slated back when when we talked about it with titans because nothing in eve should have these weird hard limits it's just bad for a sandbox game and and doing this in this way I find extremely useless because it doesn't add any proper gameplay. If they said, okay, these cores are now required because I'm not necessarily against cores and they and they require this kind of work and the, they need to be built from uh, a ton of PI or let's just say they uh, have a build uh, cost that requires a lot of pyrite and a lot of isogen, hint, hint, uh, CCP, because this is now just a trash mineral that no one cares about. Pretty if much. they did something like that, it would make sense, right? But this is not the added cost. The added cost is not on, on gameplay and man hours. It's just on NPC cost. So basically, this is just free because you can you can robo-farm bounties all day, all night. Hint, hint, Oasa. So these, these will be NPC sold or will they be built? Yeah, yeah. so they're, they're NPC seeded across the galaxy. So it's almost like... It's like blue and red loot yeah. where you can sell it to NPC orders. So they'll, you can buy it across the galaxy, essentially, mm -hmm. or a, across, uh, I would imagine, Empire space. It is pretty much just a way of putting something in a structure that is guaranteed loot drop for people to want to bash structures. Oh, yeah. Because but... they couldn't think of any better way to do that. But as what... Caleb said, I don't see why they didn't tie it to the actual production market. Yeah, I am a little baffled by that as well. Why they never it? This is if they wanted to make something, you know, tieable to it. Um, maybe so that uh, you know, maybe they thought that if they had you know a baseline price of it, that you know there wouldn't be you know a drastic reduction in cost value for these things, uh, because obviously people would set up industry lines to it. And then it would obviously, you know, eventually it would just drop the cost and make it like a negligible thing. You know, that's what it is. Yeah. It, it's it's completely that's... useless, right? Because we don't care about these added costs. If something is more costly, we just add more man hours to it. Well, yeah, this goes to Caleb's earlier point on cannibalizing the player base. Yeah, it's not even a stumbling block. It doesn't really do anything. It might disincentivize some of the as I said, ag the aggressive uh, abuse uh, of structures uh, as uh, w what I call barbed wire or uh, trash uh, porta potties and all that stuff, right? Of course, in in that regard, this might stop it a little bit, but I really don't think so, as Bart I, already pointed out. It's, it's not going to help. It's not gonna we'll we'll roll over a small group to yeah. build up a stockpile of them. Well, even just I'm, I'm right. sorry to say it, that's pretty bluntly what's going to happen. We will roll small groups to build Well, you just, just think about what happened in Fountain, right? Like, mm -hmm. you guys just took over Fountain. You guys would have got all those cores, and you would have just dropped them into new, new uh, fucking shit, right? I can tell you how this could become a useful feature. If they did the following, if they made this blueprints that uh, are basically like blueprint copies, right? that you get from these places at some sort of cost and the required materials are actually meaningful, maybe even with more value than this, but they need to mix it up so it doesn't become this flat, equally distributed stuff. Then this would actually make sense because then you need to start sourcing these materials. You add some, some production stuff and then make it a really slow build right? Make, make it something that actually takes a lot of time and a lot of planning. Just like one of the one of the bottlenecks right now on things like Titans is 
that they take a long, long time to build. It's not that we don't have the materials or anything like that. It's just you need the pipeline and the pipeline needs to be running. So you can't easily uh, resupply all your losses, at least not when the losses are meaningful, because you have these limitations. This is where this thing 